Folks, welcome in another edition right here of PubSportsRadios.com's Hot Topic Editions, NFL Draft Style. Next week, Jeff, draft already on the horizon. Seems like we've been talking about it for so long, but coming up today, an exciting episode here, breaking down those top running backs. Yeah, we're coming up close, Donnie. Just a couple more days. Uh, we'll start probably, I'm sure, towards the end of the week and next week, getting into actually what props you can make money on. Uh, there's going to be plenty of them, and this is really book's opportunity, Donnie, to cash in. There's going to be a lot of action on these props. My advice, get in on them now before they move. Now, when we take a look at the running back position here, Jeff, obviously, as we know, over the years, we've seen running back, you know, in your childhood, my childhood, dominate the first round of the right. draft. That is no longer the case. So when we take a look at the top end running backs, I think we could probably agree the first one off the board looks like it's going to be DeAndre Swift out of Georgia. Yeah, um, you know, one of the bets that I have made, Donnie, as far as props is under a half a running back in the first round. Mm -hmm. I just don't see a running back in the first round. You got a lot of talent at other positions. There's so much position depth out there. And as you said, I mean, running back just isn't a position that is that needed in the first round. You can go after it in the second, the third, the fourth rounds. But you're right. It, it's going to be Swift as the number one back. I don't have a problem with that. I, I think he's a guy that if I had one issue with – he was used a lot uh, at uh, Georgia as far as – or at least last year. But before that, he really wasn't used a whole hell of a lot. This is a guy that has been able, luckily, to be in a system that's had plenty of guys. He's kind of just come in there, gave his year or two, and then moved on. He's only 21, uh, and he has kind of been glaringly used as far as outside of last year. So you know, he's a guy that I obviously have interest in. Again, the only team I think, Donnie, that could take a running back or have interest in a running back would maybe be – Miami, just because they have so many picks in the first round. But, yeah, if I'm looking at the best back, it's probably Swift. But, you know, Donnie, there's a guy I might like a little more. I, I just think we, we've seen a lot out of him. He was obviously in kind of an interesting situation as far as kind of where he was and the offense he was in. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is an interesting guy, 5'7", 207, kind of a shifty guy, uh, kind of was in that interesting system where it was mostly a pass-driven offense. But when he got the football, Donnie, uh, he created. You look at 36% of the touches he had went for first downs or touchdowns. That's that's pretty impressive. So when you want a big play and you need a big chunk of yards, you know, maybe, a, you know, I don't know, a – uh, a first and 15, you want to create something, get yourself in better second and third down situations. He's going to be a guy to come in and be able to do some of those things. You know, it's interesting when you take a look at some of these guys, obviously you want the wide receiver type running back. What we mean by that, maybe a, a Cam Akers, one of the smaller guys that can run around. There's two interesting guys in the draft, which I've followed obviously all throughout their careers, both big bangers, which is a shame because if they came out, Jeff, in 1995, they probably would go both in the top 10. I'm talking about Jonathan Taylor and AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon coming from Boston yeah. college. And obviously Jonathan Taylor, Wisconsin, two really, really good running back prospects. But are these the type of guys that even we've seen like, you know, the running back by committee, you get that bang or you use them up for three or four years and you send them on to his new team because you don't want to pay the guy on that second contract. You, you know, Donnie, I'm going to make a comment and I'm glad you brought up Dylan. Uh, I think he's the most interesting back in this draft as far as what he can do possibly. I don't think he's never going to be, you know, a, a Christian McCaffrey or, or a player. At that level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I, I think he could be a James Conner type. I really do. I think he could lead a team in the mm -hmm. backfield. You look at his size. I mean, six foot, 247. I mean, he's a big kid, man. He's strong. He's a workhorse. I talk about bench press reps all the time. That It's obviously your upper body strength. Mm -hmm. 23 reps. I mean, he's done more reps than some defensive tackles in this draft. You know, he really reminds you of, of, of Connor. He runs a four, five, three, obviously not light year speed, but still very quick. He's got great ability to jump and just cut and move around. I really like this kid a lot. I think he could be one of those kids. Again, he's not going to be your Zeke Elliott. Well, you know, like maybe could. I could. It's not the, I mean, Zeke Elliott's kind of built like him in a way, but I think he's a really good one cut runner. I think he can go downhill and he's going to be a bear to tackle. Don't be surprised if he turns out to be one of the better backs in this draft as far as just his ability. I think he can come in and contribute quickly, kind of like a James Conner did. But the good thing about him, Donnie, is 
he doesn't necessarily have some of the injury past and, and the likely to get injured that, that James Connors had. I like Dylan a lot. Uh, you mentioned as far as kind of the, the pass catcher, that kind mm-hmm. of guy. This isn't going to be a guy that's going to go early, but I actually have the Eagles pegged for this guy later in the draft, fourth or fifth round. Mm-hmm. Michael Pirine, yeah. I, I think he's an interesting kid. Um, you know, really has the good – size you look for you talk about a guy that can catch the football out of the back foot he's a guy that can move around he's a guy that's going to give the eagles i think a little bit different realm of a back he's kind of a bigger kid he's not necessarily that shifty guy that's just going to be able to make everybody miss and you know stuff like a tyreek hill can do he, he's not that fast he ran a 462 he's not fast but he's strong he put his head down and he can go get it plus it always helps down and you have a, a kid that's a good high quality person, good kid off the field. You know, you're going to have those kids you're going to take shots on because they're talented and you know, maybe they're a little high strung off the field, but this is a good kid, good work ethic. I think in certain locker rooms, you've got to continue to keep that culture up. I think he's a kid that has a lot of positives. You know, there's a lot of interesting stuff because Jeff, you know, as well as I do, we watch a lot of college football. We try to dig deep and you find to find these guys, even if they're not on great football teams that might be able to come in and step up again. We're not talking about a top five, top 10 draft pick or a thousand yard rusher, but somebody that might be able to make a roster leaking a little bit down here, Jeff, the Reggie Corbin's out of Illinois, the Raymond Calais out of Louisiana, and also Michael Warren, the second out of Cincinnati. Some of these guys might not get drafted. They certainly are eligible to make a football team and can contribute. Yeah, I mean, I you know, guy you know, Donnie, well, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Levante Bellamy at, yes. at Western Michigan, mm-hmm. he, he's a guy that I think a lot of people like. I mean, he had some really solid games against higher level opponents. Um, you know, he's not a big kid, but, but he's quick. He's fast. He can block well. You know, one thing you have to do at, at those schools in you know, Western Michigan, some of those Mac schools, you got to be able to block. You're going to have to be asked to do a lot of different things. Uh, Bellamy is older. I mean, he's 23 years old, but, you know, Donnie, sometimes when you get older, you get some wisdom. Uh, I don't exactly hate him. I think he could be an interesting player. Uh, Eno Benjamin, a lot of people like him. We saw him at Arizona State. Showed some real toughness. That's a tough conference, Donnie. At the end of the day, they have some really good defenses up there over the years. Washington, you know, your um, Utahs, your Cals, just some really tough-nosed defenses. And he did some really good things against all of them. Uh, And he's a guy, I think the best thing about him, he's a violent runner. He's going to beat you up. He's going to go at you. He doesn't mind punishing you downhill. So, you know, those are guys that I think, you know, they're not going to be the the Taylors and the Swifts and the Edward Tellers, but you know, guys like Bellamy, Mike uh, Warren uh, from Cincinnati, uh, Eno Benjamin, uh, all guys I like. As I said, to me, my favorite kid is AJ Dillon. One other guy, Donnie. Mm-hmm. This is a kid that if if you really get into the depths of college football, you'll know. Um, I just think he's fascinating because he has the home run hitter ability. Darrington Evans from App State. State. Yeah, yeah. Baby. Mm-hmm. I mean, this kid has a ton of speed. You talk about a home run hitter. You don't see a lot of – like college, you see those 80-yard runs a lot. It wouldn't surprise me if Darrington Evans finds a way to get on a roster and make a team just because of his – I mean, the kids runs a 4-4-1, Donnie. Pretty impressive. Um, you know, he's a guy to keep in mind as well. Now, also, we're taking a look at betting. So do you think there is going to be a running back taken in the first round to go over that half of the running back taken? So you think the first running back will be taken probably? Because we're also – the interesting part about this too, Jeff, is when we look at the recalibration of the draft, and not so much where they're at home. I'm just talking about the draft itself now. We have the first round on one night, and then we all see, Jeff, the next day where the teams have a chance to regroup and they reshuffle their boards to say, you know what, who's going to go off there first? So you do think DeAndre Swift is going to be the first to come off, but on day two of the draft. Yeah, I I definitely – think he's going to be the first I think my concern and again my only concern would be Miami I I could see Miami Mm -hmm. taking a shot I think Miami has more pressing needs though I think they need an offensive lineman I think they obviously are going to get their quarterback they're going to need a safety they have I think a little bit bigger needs and as I said does this have a treasure trove in the first round for running backs no but there's a lot of really good second third fourth fourth round players and keep in mind Donnie Miami does pick at 39 so I think they'd probably highlight that spot maybe as as an opportunity to go get a a running back I just think with so much talent here I mean you have so many high level players you get a great defensive lineman offensive lineman group you have so many receivers uh corners and safeties there's just such a wealth of talent yeah I, I would think early in the second round maybe 35 to 40 I think you could see a back uh there 
Um, maybe L.A., the Chargers, maybe they take a shot. I mean, obviously losing a guy like Melvin Gordon, something like that. But I, I think they're going to be the opportunities, the 37, 39, uh, those kind of spots. A lot to go over here leading up to the NFL draft. As we said, Jeff, next Thursday already. I know you're doing a lot of things here at PubSportsRadio.com, including putting out a lot of these draft blogs that people can dig into. Let the people know what you got coming out, what you have put out in the way of those draft blogs. Yeah, I put out a mock first round. I'm going to do this week um, kind of a – a round by round, maybe a couple guys to take shots with. I'm really going to delve into the props a lot more just because that's where the money's made. But to me, Donnie, if you're able to create your maybe first and second round, you can really go off of that and really kind of – because that allows you to look into what teams need, where they're going to go. I also did, just being an Eagle fan, I did an Eagle-centric seven-round draft as to what I want them to do. I think the name of the game for the Eagles is – Get those big time players early, fill in with depth and high character kids. Um, there's a wealth of talent. I mean, we could, I, I'm sure a lot of people say this every year, but I truly mean this, Donnie. From one to seven, as far as those rounds, mm-hmm. could be one of the more talented drafts I've seen. There's so much talent here. I mean, you're getting high quality, solid players in the fifth, sixth. Uh, rounds this year. I think you're going to see a lot of kids come out of nowhere and figure it out. You know what else is interesting too, Jeff? When you talk about all the talent that's in the first seven rounds, we know once the draft ends, that's where a lot of the fun starts to begin, where teams fill in with those undrafted free agents. There's a lot to go over. Guys are going to get paid because just because you're not drafted, Jeff, I mean, they still get $30,000, $40,000, $100,000 is sought after free agents even after the draft. No, it's a great point. I mean, there's so many kids. Uh, We've talked about him before on this show, Corey Clement. Mm -hmm. Corey Clement was undrafted out of Wisconsin. Eagles found him. He had a major role in that Super Bowl team. The NBA, Donnie. I'm the Miami Heat. Three of their five starters Mm -hmm. are late second round and undrafted players. I mean, it all it's all about work ethic, Donnie. Robert Covington was an undrafted player in the NBA. He signed a big deal recently. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be drafted to do something in, in these big sports. You just gotta have a work ethic. You got you not be lazy. You can make it happen. So yeah, you're you're well you're well versed in that, Donnie, for sure. No, good stuff here. And again, keep in mind on PuttsportsRadio.com, we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff leading you right up to the draft next Thursday night. So we'll add another level tomorrow once we tune back in. It's fun. It's always nice talking about running backs. We'll pick another grouping tomorrow. He's Jeff Nadu. I'm Donnie Seymour. Thanks for tuning in the pubsportsradio.com. Beware tomorrow for another episode of Hot Topics.